This is just a short video. It probably won't be short though, but this is just a short video <laughs> telling you our advice if you are starting short casting for salmon. This is what works for us, and we're gonna share that with you. I wrote it all down so we can stay on track. Hopefully. Um, hopefully. We've been salmon fishing for quite a bit. I've been salmon fishing, uh, short casting for about 15 years at the local river mouse and piers and stuff. And Andrew's been doing it for a few years too. Yeah. yeah. Um, we just finished fishing, so we're gonna tell you everything that we know, the advice that we would like <laughs> to have known when we first started. So we're gonna start off with the questions we get all the time. So just as a, a little intro, um, we've been fishing a lot. We've talked to a lot of people that we fish with. I used to work at a tackle store. I know the kinds of questions that people ask. So this is the questions people ask and we're gonna try to answer them. <laughs> I've asked some dumb ones myself, so don't feel bad. So there. have I. <laughs> so anyway, when and where, when. You can start fishing for salmon in the, off the piers and in the harbors, but mostly off the piers as early as late July. You can, ca I have caught salmon in, in late July, um, sometimes even earlier, but most of the time, keeping it brief, you're gonna go late August, September and October. That's the when. Yes, that's, it, again, it changes from year to year, but depending on the weather. But uh, yeah, essentially that's your, your main time is gonna be within that range of end of August, September is usually, all of September is generally pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so that's the months, the weather. So say you're fishing in September, a normal day in September. Um, if it is days that you might wanna get out is days that it rained. Yep. If it rained, get out that night or that morning. If it's cloudy, you can fish later. Like today, it's bluebird skies. Yeah. The fishing died, we were out here at 6 a.m. It died at 7.30. As soon as the sun came up, the fish disappeared. So you can catch fish in the middle of the day if it is cloudy and yes. overcast. If it is sunny, maybe pick another day to go out. Yeah. Not that you can't catch them, but your percentage will go up a lot. These fish, as soon as the sun comes up, they go deep, so. Yeah. Especially from shore, again, you have limited access. So it's it's early mornings and, and evening. So evening best is often time, yeah. the best time to get out. And uh, that goes into our third point, times of day. Yeah. So my, my personal favorite time of day to fish is at night. I love it, we love fishing at night. We catch a lot of fish at night when there's obviously no sun. The fish come really shallow. Um, some of the harbors we fish are actually pretty shallow, like eight, nine, 10 feet, fish come right in. Yeah. So low light is, is gonna be your main times to fish. Those are gonna be the good times. Sunrise, we usually do pretty good at. Yep. Again, if you have to fish in the middle of the day or after work, just try to go on a day when it's cloudy or a little bit you know, rainy and drizzly. You'll have a better chance. Especially too, if it has rained, generally the water is cloudier. Or you're generally fishing around river mouths. So uh, the water being cloudy also diffuses a light. So that'll help you again for fishing during the day. Yeah. So anyway, that's when and where. That's It's very basic, but pretty much you're going to find a river mouth or a pier that is near a river mouth. And if that river has salmon in it, uh, you will catch salmon there if you fish enough. Yeah. So the next point is gear. We're trying to keep this fast. The last one we filmed was an hour. So we're trying to keep <laughs> this one fast, but here, we're gonna talk about spinning rods first. And generally speaking, this is what works for us and that is very common. And again, working at a tackle shop, I know what people buy. Eight and a half to 10 and a half foot mediums and medium heavies are the most popular salmon rods that you can buy. Andrew's using an eight and a half. It's a Fenwick Elite Tech stem and steel rod. It's just, what? Medium eight, heavy. Six, yeah. Eight six medium heavy. This one I got here, this is a nine six medium heavy. Um, I've used mediums, medium heavies, I have cast heavies. Heavies are a little too heavy. Most guys don't use them, but um, generally eight and a half to nine and a half, even 10 and a half medium, medium heavies. It depends the length of the rod. Like today we were out in the boat, um, shorter rods better, eight and a half foot. But if you're casting off a pier, a 10 and a half might be better. It depends. You will be able to cast farther with a longer rod. Yeah. So that's one thing to consider. My favorite length overall, nine and a half. It's kind of the best of both worlds. It's not super long that you're gonna get tired, but it's short enough that if you had to fish from a boat, it's possible. Yeah, and, and <laughs> we're really talking about shortcasting too. Like yeah. it's it's not as fatiguing as using a long rod, but it still has enough length and leverage and power to do that. Um, so bait casting rods. You do see some people using bait casting rods. Not as popular, especially for beginners. This is actually an 8.6 medium heavy bait cast. This is a salmon steelhead bait casting rod. Um, salmon steel bait casting rods are a little more moderate. 
that you probably can't see this, but they they bend a lot more in the tip. Um, they're not stiff like a bass rod. They have longer handles, and you're gonna pair that with a high capacity um, bait casting reel. <laughs> don't use a little dinky bass reel because they don't hold enough line. Yeah, it is possible to do it, but in general, you need something bigger, like a, a, a 200, 300 size or a round reel like this is a Calcutta. This holds quite a bit of line. Another tip is if you have to use a bait caster, use braid because you can fit more line on it. Yes. If you don't have a lot of capacity, yeah, use line, the braid. Line capacity, uh, not only because you're making long casts generally from shore, but even I use spinning spinning gear. When I cast out and I hook a salmon, it's a salmon generally will take over another 100% of what I cast out again off the tip. So if you're casting yeah. and you use half your bait caster, you're not going to have enough line to land that fish. I've seen guys, <laughs> and if you have to fish a bait cast, some pe I think some people just think it's it's cool and it's fun. Sure, but it's not the best option. Yeah. The disadvantages of using a bait caster is they do backlash, <laughs> wind. Don't say they don't backlash because even pros, if you're casting at the pier and it's windy, and you're bait, you're fishing a bait caster, even the best bait casting caster ever will backlash. They don't generally cast as far as a spinning rod and they don't cast as light of lures. Like if you're using a spinning rod and fishing a Clio in this, you will always be able to cast farther in my opinion with a spinning rod. Um, and generally spinning reels, the drags are a little smoother on there too. So you can use both, but for a beginner and most, you rarely see people use bait casters. Most people use spinning. So that's for that. Buy the best spinning reel you can afford. I'm not gonna say you need uh, you know, to spend a ton of money. I'm um, not gonna hold mine up for this part. <laughs> yeah, so this this is a Shimano Stratic. They've been making these for decades. They're really popular professional grade reels. Um, they're over 300 bucks. Okay, I'm not saying you need that. Buy the best reel you can buy, preferably something with an aluminum frame because these kings, when they're hot, I've seen guys' cheap reels just explode. Like, your drag will just die and yeah. fuse together. Like, yep. things break. Buy the best reel you can afford. Um, I'm not, these are all Stratix, okay? <laughs> I've used Stratix for years and never had a problem with them. This is the old wooden handle one. This I'm just showing you this. If you do spend good money in a reel, it yeah. will last you years. This reel is about, I think, 12 to 15 years old. I, I forget. I've had my Stratic for my bass, bass rod for getting close to 10, I'd say. Yep. Yeah. So this thing is old. I've caught a ton of salmon on that. This, this is my reel that has mono on it. That's lasted a long time. I got my money's worth out of it. Um, this Stratic here, the FJ, I've had that for over 10 years. Caught a ton, that's my main salmon reel, ton of salmon on it. And it still fishes like it's, you know, brand new. <laughs> and then I just got this, this is the new Stratic. This is a 4,000, I don't even have line on it. Um, I don't just use them for salmon though, I can use them for other things, right? But buy a good quality reel and a good quality rod, it'll last you a long time. If say you buy a cheap reel for 50 bucks and it breaks after a year, you have to buy another one, then you have to buy another one. Or you could buy a good reel and have it last 10 to 15 years. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. not everyone can afford it, I understand, but if you're just starting out, go to your tackle shop and just ask them like for a good quality reel, buy the best one you can afford. It will save you money in the long run, which is great. Do some research too. If, if you're going for salmon, get one that has a good drag system Yeah. because that's gonna be the most stress that's being put on it. So it has the line capacity and the drag system to match that. So and speaking yeah, of line capacity, research. yeah. yeah. So, the question I get a lot when I was at the fishing store was, can you use regular bass gear to catch salmon? The answer is 100% yes, 100%. <laughs> you can catch salmon on any gear. You can catch muskie on a bass rod. It doesn't mean it's the I've best. I've done that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean it's the best for it, right? So for instance, a lot of guys have a 2500 size reel, just a little, like this is a bass reel. Is this good enough for salmon? Yeah, I've caught salmon in this, no problem. The problem is the capacity. It doesn't hold that much line. Like if you look on the side, it says it holds a hundred, say you're using 10 pound line, 120 yards of 10 pound line. Salmon will easily, a big one, will easily pull that off. A 4,000 is the size I recommend. It holds 200 yards of 10 pound line. Yeah. Um, if you have to use small gear, because that's all you have, use braided line, because braided line is thin. So a 20 pound braid or a 15 pound braid is only five or six pound thin. So instead of holding, you know, 120 yards of 10, now you're holding, you know, closer to 200 yards. So if you have to use a smaller reel, use braided line. And I'd recommend 15 or 20 pound braid. Speaking of that, <laughs> me and Andrew have a good thing about that. One mistake I see people make when I was at the fishing store is they've used line that's way too heavy for salmon. Yeah. 
because they're like, oh, salmon are 20, 30 pounds. I have to use 30, 40, 50, 60 pound line. Mistake, big mistake. Always stay within your lure rating or your line rating on your rod. When you get a rod, it'll say on the back, this one's a medium heavy, it says 10 to 20 pound. This rod is rated to flex at 20 pound. Anything after that, it will snap. And it is your fault if that happens. Yeah. If you put 30 pound braid on this and you don't use a leader that's lighter, it will snap. A lot of people break rods and they blame the rod. It's usually the fisherman's fault for poor rod handling and over lining your rod. Like, yes, you can throw 50 pound braid on this rod, but you're more likely to snap it. I, I would rather my line snap than my rod. <laughs> so make sure you kind of yeah. match it. And uh, that is, like I said, it's a kind of a, a rookie mistake to do that. But just, just think logically, you know, you're, the guys in the ocean are catching thousand pound marlin on 120 pound test. Yeah. They're, you're never, you're never, really catching trophy fish, you're not going to exceed fishing, the weight of the fish. You're fishing open water in general. <laughs> I use 15 pound braid. 15 pound braid is 15 pound tough. Like you, You're not lifting a salmon up on the side of the bridge. Yeah. So again, Hopefully. using a shock leader too. So say you have, all you have is 30 or 40 pound braid. Make sure you use a shock leader so that it's lighter. So you, your shock leader is 10 pound. You attach it to 30 or 40 pound braid. Your leader is going to break before the rod. So that's yeah. good. But that is one thing I wanted just to discuss. So <laughs> in general, you want to use a 4,000. And a 4,000 actually balances a longer salmon rod better. Yeah. I even see some guys use 5,000s. If you can get a 5,000, like, go for it. Yeah, I would go for it. Do you want to do it? Yeah. yeah. Bigger spools cast farther too. So if you're using a 2,500 and I'm using a 4,000, 100% I will be able to cast <laughs> farther than you. And in fishing from shore for salmon, distance is everything. Yes. The longer your lure goes out, the more time your lure's in the strike zone. Um, for line, most guys, there's, there's three different options for line. Um, you can use braid, that's what I use. You can use mono, which I also use too. And some people use fluorocarbon. I don't bother with it because it's expensive. Um, especially when you're night fishing, the fish can't see anyway. What I use, this is just what works for me. Uh, I've pretty much come to using 15 or 20 pound Power Pro or any braid. And then I attach a really long, uh, probably eight to 10 foot monofilament shock leader yeah. and the reason that i do that is again i've i've talked to tons of guys i've seen tons of things happen if you use straight braid that's fine disadvantages are fish can see braid if you're fishing at night that's not an issue but fish can see braid because it's it's not transparent and there's no stretch braid has pretty much zero stretch and when a, when a fish slams it especially when they're fresh early in the year they can slam it so fast that you won't be able to t loosen your drag fast enough that they will snap you off. They'll snap 20 pound braid like it's nothing. Yeah. So if you have a long like eight or 10 foot shock leader, it gives you a little bit of stretch because mono does stretch. I think it's like 15 to 20%, something like that. It does have stretch. So I find that I lose a lot less fish yeah. when I have that shock leader. When I was, when I was my first time uh, shore casting, I was using straight braid and I snapped off was it four fish that four morning. fish yeah and and every time just right away and i, I had yeah. to drag loose and it kept snapping the line regardless uh, so, as soon as i switched to a shock leader yeah that maybe one since then i've snapped off from shore. there are okay there it, some it people can use braid and they just keep a looser drag and it doesn't happen yeah. but if you're casting super far away and you need a good hook set you have to keep your you don't want your your reel to slip <laughs> too much when you set the hook yeah so that's just what i find the reason i use a longer leader too a lot of people say they don't want their leader to run through the guides if you tie a good knot, an FG knot, an Albright knot, uh, Alberto knot, Alberto, yeah. it slides through the guides no problem. My knot is actually about right here when I'm casting. By the time you release your cast, it flies through the guides no problem. If you tie a proper, well-tied connection knot, it will not fail. If you do have your knot fail, you're not tying it correctly. I Even this morning, I, I snapped one off. Uh, my, I used an Alberto knot and had zero issue with the leader knot itself. It, yeah. it snapped off. <laughs> the line, the leader will snap before the, yeah. the connection knot, if you tie it properly. Speaking of um, leaders, if you've ever watched our Instagram channel, you know I'm a big fan of the Maxima stuff. This stuff is the Maxima Ultra Green. That's what I exclusively use for leaders. I've been using it for years. 10 pound is what I use on my spinning. And uh, 12 to 14 pound is what I use on my, my bait caster if I'm fishing bigger stuff but it's cheap. This was like 17, 18 bucks, 200 yards. That'll last you quite a bit. You don't have to use anything fancy. Even myself, I just use, I've got a big spool of strand that, uh, that I used uh, for my carp, 
Kerpa, Kerpreel, and I'll use that for leader material as well. So it's, it's, as long as it's mono, it's giving that stretch. That's the purpose is, is it's giving that bit of stretch on a shock lead. Yeah, and even fluoro, a lot of guys will ask me, do you use fluoro? I personally don't, I don't see a need for it. The harbors and marinas that we fish, the water usually has a stain to it. So I don't see the point of using something that's more expensive and that doesn't tie as good of knots. Fluoro is very easy to burn when you, when you pull the knot. It's more brittle. It is more abrasion resistant, but it's you're not, not really necessary where we're fishing yeah, and we don't need the clarity, so we never use it. Some people use it, it works for them. Mono works for us, works great. I'm cheap. I'm cheap too. <laughs> and another tip on leaders, don't tie a leader and, and use it for weeks. Change yes. your leader every day. Yep. Leader knots that go through your guides, they will be weakened over time. Tie it every day. You don't want to go out fish and cook one fish and snap it off because you didn't spend two minutes to put a new yep. leader on. Exactly. And leader material is cheap, like Andrew said. <laughs> Tie it every day. You will regret it if you don't. Anyway, <laughs> next topic um, is lures. We're going to keep this very brief. There's yep. tons of lures you can catch salmon on, tons of them. But we're only going to cover three. Three of the most popular lures that you can use. That work for us. They sell every year. They're popular for a reason because they catch fish. If something's popular, it's for a reason. <laughs> you don't have to be like, oh, I'm gonna use something different because the fish, the salmon are dumb. They, they don't learn. They come here for the first time. They're seeing everything for the first time. They slam lures and then they go up the creek and they die. They don't like learn information and yep. come back again. This is their first time they're coming in contact with shore fishermen. Yeah, so <laughs> let's cover spoons first. All right, so spoons are the most popular um, salmon casting, shore casting lure of all time because there's several reasons for that. One of them is because they cast really far. Yep. They cast super far, they fish deep, and they catch fish. And the most popular lure of all time? Little Cleo. Little Cleo. Uh, probably, probably the most popular for evening and early morning in the lower light conditions is the three quarter rounds, just because you get yep. that extra distance from shore using something this heavy. So these are, are, they sell out every year at the stores despite having generally a large quantity of them. Yeah. So it's good to have a different selection of little Cleos. We'll talk about colors in a sec. Other popular um, spoon is anything by Moonshine. This is the little teardrop size. They have a bunch of different shapes. These glow a lot. We'll talk more about glow in a sec. That's another popular one. Um, Mep Cyclops. Yep. Mep Cyclops is a more slender spoon. I find a lot of people, they don't, they don't like them because they don't know how to fish them. I think that's how it is. They fish deeper and faster because they're slender. So if you're fishing a really deep pier, they can be your best friend. If you're fishing shallow water, probably not the best option. <laughs> Um, another lure that's thin that works good is the classic crocodile. That's another lure that's thin and fishes deeper and faster. So that's another good one. Um, Len Thompson. Len Thompson's made in Canada. If you're looking for a good quality spoon, the glows are really good. They have a lot of different colors. One of my favorite colors that they, they have for an overcast day, they have this one called Blaze Brass. It's half brass, half bright orange. This is a three quarter ounce with a single hook. Just great quality lures made in Canada, and they cost less than the ones that are made in China. So check them out too. Again, doesn't really matter. There's a ton of spoons. They all are good. Pick the one that's, you know, pick Cleo's or whatever ones. Um, one thing we'll touch on quick is not being a one spoon angler. Yeah. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is, you know, they hear that, oh, Cleo, little Cleo's are the best. So that's all they use. And Cleo's are an all round really good spoon, but sometimes, um, something different can make a huge difference. So like a Cleo might be good, a three-quarter Cleo, but the other day we were fishing three-quarter Cleos and the guy beside us was using a two-thirds Cleo, just a little bit smaller, yep. and he hooked three fish and we had nothing. Yep. Um, or again, like we said with Cyclopses and, and um, crocodiles, something that fishes deeper. If you're fishing deeper water, try something that fishes deeper. Don't just fish one spoon. It, that would be like bass fishing with one lure. Like, at least have something, a little bit of um, lures that cover different situations, you know? Yeah. You're gonna want different colors. So speaking of colors, at night, glow, 100%. Yes. Um, yes. But during the day, you're gonna want silver on a sunny day. Hammered finish sometimes. Hammered finish yeah. is really good. Different colors like blue, um, green, like half silver, half green. I've done good with chartreuse, um, like the orange one, like I said. And uh, even glow during the day, I think just the color of it is cool. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, so try different colors. The ones that are popular for me, if I had to pick two silver ones during the day, would be 
half silver, half, um, like they have this like limey green chartreuse color. That one has been really good for me. And a hammered, half hammered, half hammered blue. Yeah. Really good. But the really, silver and blue is probably one of my favorites yeah, as well. Buy a few that, that you like and have confidence in and just keep fishing them and you'll catch fish. Speaking of glow, some lures glow more than others. And some people, I think the mistake is that they think that means it's a better lure. That is a mistake. Yes. That is one thing that I wish I knew. I, we were fishing here the other day and we were fishing Cleos. Cleos are kind of a medium glow. They don't glow super bright. Moonshines are the ones that glow like crazy. <laughs> and a lot of people tell me they're the best because they glow the best. That is false. It depends the, on the situation. The That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> some river mouse and harbors are generally, usually always muddy. Okay. When they're muddy, those supercharged glowing moonshines are probably your best bet. But some of the harbors, when the water's gin clear, and you have something that that literally glows like the sun, it's, that can be a disadvantage. I think the fish, spook fish. It literally yeah. spooks fish. I remember an old guy, he told me here when I was probably 14, 15, fishing off the pier, and he was like, he catches the most fish on a dimly lit Clio. <laughs> like dimly lit, just yeah. like quick flash, that's it. I would, yeah, I would say about 70% of the, the salmon I hit that hit a Clio, glow Clio, are just before it's my last class before I decide to charge it yeah that's when they hit and it's yeah it seems to be a majority of them at that point so it, it really depends on the conditions if yep. it's super muddy the good the super high glow ones can be awesome if not use something that glows a little fade like a little more faded or just don't make it glow as much with your light yeah so that's the other thing the other thing we have to cover is uh, hooks on spoons I had a lot of people ask me because I buy a lot of spoons with a single they're called siwash hooks it's a single hook they're really popular in the West Coast because a lot of the streams that is what you have to do legally in Ontario you don't have to do that um, at least in this area <laughs> treble hooks are very popular you get a better hookup okay. like yeah. percentage like fish that grab your lure you hook more of them but when you hook a fish on a single hook, when you hook it, it very rarely comes yeah. off. Very rarely. So I kind of go 50-50. If I, if at the beginning of the year, I usually use treble hooks because there's not a, a ton of fish. I want to hook pretty much every fish that I hook. But then as the year progresses and more fish come in, I usually switch to a single hook. The advantage is you, you get more fish into the, the shore and you do less damage to a fish if you're going to release it. So really you, sure. could, you could do either. Um, next is crankbaits. So why don't you tell them about the jointed? That's so, definitely one of the most popular salmon lures of all time. So yeah, the, the J13, a lot of guys will use uh, the J11s as well. Um, Fire Tiger is probably the most popular color for salmon. Uh, just bright, vibrant, it's, it's high visibility right in the water. Uh, but this one, the action on this just seems to annoy the heck out of salmon. And so they will just slam this. Uh, I've even, last year, even caught, uh, caught a salmon with one of these in his mouth, actually. That's how I got this one. <laughs> it was yeah. in a salmon that had snapped him off. Another good color is the hot orange. But again, if the water's clear, you don't always have to use the fire tiger colors. Yeah. We've caught them on silvers and blues, and yeah. the, the bright colors are popular. I get fire, if you can only have one fire tiger, 100%. Yeah. This one has been good, but again, other colors. If you can see my box, like I'll do a, a B-roll. Most of it is fire tiger, just because it's, <laughs> it's a very annoying lure for the fish. They hate it. So, and then the third option, so we had spoons, very popular. The J13 Rappler, very popular. The disadvantage of the J13 Rappler though, is it does not cast as far as a Clio. Yes. You can cast a Clio or a spoon twice as far and fish deeper. And the jointed Rappler is more of a shallow water. Like it, it dives, I don't know, six, seven feet at the most, yeah. maybe 10, I don't know. But if you're fishing off a pier and the fish are deep, it's not the best lure. Um, crankbaits, very briefly. Andrew smashed a, a good fish the other day on a, on a crankbait. Yep. Lipless crankbaits, in my opinion, I've been saying this for years, are the most underrated salmon lure of all time. Yep. They cast a mile. Yep. They're rattly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just got a bunch, but <laughs> listen to that. They make a lot of noise. Yep. They have a lot of vibration. They cast far. They're easy to use um, to fish any depth because they basically sink about a foot a second. Yep. So say like the fish are down, you're in 30 feet of water and the fish are down 20 feet, just cast it out, count to 15 or 20 and then start reeling in. Easy to use. And two treble hooks, usually when you, they grab it, you get them. Yeah. You get them somewhere in the, in the face. Other popular crankbaits is uh, the Storm, what's this one again? I always forget. Hot, hot. The Hot and Tot. That thing is crazy. And um, these ones too. Hot and Cordell or Storm? No, it's a, a Storm Wigglewort. Wigglewort, I've smashed them on. 
Um, flatfish, a lot of crankbaits, they're just crazy. They make lots of noise, they have rattles in them, they're erratic. Salmon in the right situation, crush them. Especially like we fish some shallower harbors, they crush them. Yeah. Like we've had days where people are like, oh, they're not biting and all they're chucking is spoons. We went in there in this, <laughs> this area yeah. and in half an hour we caught two fish on crankbaits that they had just fished for like the whole morning. So, and, and the thing is too, always see what's happening that day. If you see everyone chucking spoons and no one's hitting anything, change it up. If the, if the wind is at your back, generally I'm gonna be throwing a J13 because the wind will give me my extra distance that I need in the cast. Uh, so I actually have my full length, but otherwise, yeah, it's generally just a spoon or a rattle bait. And I'll try and fish what others aren't, just to kind of set myself apart from the crowd. Yeah, like if you're Unless fishing a whole pier and there's like <laughs> 10 guys all fishing Cleos, try a Cyclops or try a Blue Fox or yeah. try a Spinner, you know? Another lure that is, it can be popular is Spinners. We don't really use them a lot because they don't cast as far. They create lift when you reel them in yeah. as they spin, so they don't fish as deep. They also twist your line. Um, People do use them, people love them. I personally don't use them a lot. I don't think it's a good lure for beginners either because they do twist your line. They don't cast that far. They and can they, be good. I have crushed salmon on them, yep. but I want something that casts as far as possible and that's gonna be a spoon. Um, swivels, I'm kind of uh, opinionated on this too. When you're shore <laughs> casting with spoons, some people use swivel, some people don't. I, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if you use a swivel or if you don't use a swivel. You don't need a swivel when you're fishing a spoon if you fish it correctly. Yes. A spoon wobbles if you fish it at the right speed. You can look, do it right past you so you can see the speed you need to reel in. If you're reeling in your spoon and it's spinning, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <laughs> if you're reeling in your spoon and, and it comes up and it's just spinning on your line as you're looking at it, you're reeling it too fast. Fish don't like that. They don't like when the spoon, yeah. they just like it when it's wobbling. There's, there's a fine line, uh, depending on the spoon, it can be quite a fine line between when it's just gliding through the water uh, to when it has that little, as Jesse calls it, a sachet back and forth, yeah. and then again, that, that spin. So you gotta find that that just wobble as it goes through and the And it's water. different for every spoon. Yeah. Like Cleo's and, and crocodiles, they're all different because they're different shapes. And it's but often you, slower than you think. Yeah. <laughs> so that can that can make the difference between catching fish and not catching fish. Because I think a lot of people, beginners, they reel in too fast and their spoon's just spinning in the water and you very, very rarely catch fish. And it's also gonna twist your line and cause you just a big headache. So just make sure you're fishing the right speed. If you have to use a swivel, use a ball bearing swivel, especially if you're using um, a spinner. But in general, I don't use swivels at all for spoons. I don't think it's necessary. It's for just, a spinner, I would. For a spinner, yes. Mean, for sure. Um, if you're someone that likes to switch lures all the time, which I do too, <laughs> a clip or a swivel might be a good idea. So that's that. So now we're gonna quickly, if I have my phone, <laughs> go over the last um, part is just other equipment that you need. Um, so you basically are gonna have your rod and uh, you know some lures, just a little tackle box with some lures. You're gonna need a good net. If yeah, you're fishing off the next pier, investment. yeah, this is not even a good one. This is just a one that we use. If you're fishing off the pier, you need a net with a really long handle sometimes. So make sure before you go fishing at a pier, make sure you have a net or make sure that you are able to get to the yeah. fish. Cause I've seen so many people fish off the pier and it's like a 10, 12 foot drop to where the water is. And then they hook a fish and they, they can't get it up. Yeah. And then your option is is trying to use again too heavy of a line, and even then if you're trying to lift a fish out, it's going to bend you the hook out. It's you not going to happen. You can't lift a salmon up the pier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you need a net. Get a like you, that net there was 35, 40 bucks. It's a cheap one. Um, we've gone through a few of them. Next year we're going to invest in a good one. But anyway, um, when you're starting out, you need something, and at least you this will get something. This will get the fish yeah. on the bank for you. Right? Yeah. Um, you don't want to have the fish just like you know on the ground getting all hurt up and. Good. But anyway, next thing is a headlight. If you're fishing at night, which is one of my favorite times to fish, a headlight can be a, a, a lifesaver. You can right. see things, especially at night when you can't see where you're walking. You don't want to fall into a rock or something. There's rocks everywhere, there's sticks. <laughs> and you can also use it to make your lure glow. Very handy to have. Um, if you don't have a headlight as well, bring a flashlight or something that you can make your lure glow with. Um, pliers, make sure you have a good set of needle nose pliers. These salmon, their mouths are really tough, and when they slam a like a, especially a crankbait with two treble hooks, you really need uh, a pair of pliers. Even yeah. like forceps like this, like heavy yeah. duty, ones. heavy duty forceps. Yeah, even these these take it out of the mouth, well as uh, pretty good. But you get the, the small wire ones for like trout, and yeah, yeah you're not going to get a good grip on it. Just a treble, go to Dollar Emma, yeah. go to the dollar store, buy a pair of needle nose pliers yeah. for two bucks. That'll be great. Um, another thing, especially in September, bug spray. If you're fishing at night or early in the morning, the mosquitoes can be bad. Bring bug spray, 100%. I always bring it because sometimes it's, it was bad the other day we were yeah. here and it was just swarms yeah. them. 
Um, the last thing I always say to bring, bring a cup of coffee or a drink with you or some other beverage, I'm not gonna <laughs> say, but it's nice to have a nice cup of coffee or water when you're fishing, especially when it gets chillier at night. Yeah. So that's basically, it's not, not covering everything. Some people will be like, oh, we didn't cover this or that, but that's just off the top of our head what, what we would recommend if you're starting out yeah. shore casting for salmon. And my biggest advice for beginners would be persistence. Just keep fishing, keep going. We fish a lot when in the earlier season when you fish and you don't catch anything. Yeah. And you don't you go the next day and you don't catch anything. Yep. You just gotta keep going. There will be a time when a lot of fish come in and if you cast a Cleo, I guarantee, if you cast a Cleo at a good spot continually, you will eventually catch a yes. fish. Or at least hook it. Yep. It's not hard, it's just you have to be willing to put the time in. Um, but yeah, that's about it. If you have any other questions about it, you can always leave something in the comments below. And this is our YouTube channel, but we're most active on Instagram. If you have any questions at all, yeah. um, comment below or shoot us a message on Instagram. We would be more than happy to um, to answer them if we can. Yep. We're not experts, we're just average Ontario anglers, but we catch salmon, so we can definitely try to help you when we... And if we you can. don't know the answer, we'll just give you our opinion. If you don't know the answer, <laughs> we'll make something up. <laughs> anyway, tight lines, and if you see us on the water, Wearing one of these weird shirts. Wish us the best. Wish us the best. <laughs>